What is going on guys? This is DJ Clan Smasher and today I'm bringing you an episode. It's Elite Gaming vs. Cold September. This is for week 6. I know it's a little weird because we had to make a bunch of uh, arranged wars throughout the week. But pretty much we're finally getting caught up. Um, this is against Cold September guys. The war was pretty intense. We actually did a great job <clears throat> as a team. We got 10, I mean 9 10v10s, 3 11v11s guys and then our 9v9 was 84%. So we pretty much killed it there. So great job by the team. And let's just go ahead and get started, guys. I'll be showing you a few 10v10 hits and then the rest of the 11v11s. All right, let's do this. So, guys, we're starting off with the with Bill Gates actually doing a mass miner attack, guys. So it's going to be with the archer kind of getting some percentage down here. Well, not really percentage, but just getting rid of that builder hood just so that it's not annoying at the very end. And then the king queen at the very bottom at 6 o'clock. Um, getting rid of this town hall, securing pretty much a solid two star, just in case it didn't happen. But anyways, guys, the uh, minor attack has already started. There was a baby dragon at the top section, closer to nine and to ten o'clock, just to get rid of some of these buildings, guys. This is just mainly to keep the um, the troops inside the actual um, what is it called, the actual base, making sure that the funneling occurs and the miner attack is pretty much there so anyways guys the mass miner has begun the queen and king are about to go down the king did go down the queen is still doing some work over here still has the queen ability which is going to help out tremendously cutting off some of these buildings these buildings being cut off makes it to where the pathing for these miners just goes straight through the base are, are able to take care of the final buildings pretty much um and that makes it to where these troops, the miners, are going to be able to take care of this core section. It gets a little sketch here in a bit, guys. But as you can see, there are two heal spells. So this is what's really going to help out this attack. Look at all those skeleton traps. The he was definitely preparing for either a hog attack or something similar to this. The good thing is that the miners were able to take care of these uh, skelly traps and still keep moving. That heal spell pretty much kept them alive with all this splash damage. The wizard tower, you know, and things like that. The Lava Hound isn't going to do much versus these Miners. And then the rest of the Miners are moving in towards the top portion, taking care of this Archer Tower. Moving into the final structures of the defenses, guys. And as you can see, the final heal spell is placed. I'm trying to keep everything alive before dealing with the next uh, splash damage. So that's very good by Bill Gates, pretty much. As you can see, this base is finally starting to get cleared up here. Um, and then uh, they did face a big bomb up there. So that seemed like it was going to be an issue for a bit because there's still a wizard tower that's left. So that is some splash damage. But as you can see, guys, they're moving in towards the final portion of the base. The wizard tower is starting to hit a few of the miners, but the miners did do a great split. So that definitely helped out. And then the miners just go in there and take care of the wizard tower. So great job by Bill Gates here. Now we're going to go ahead and move on, guys, to the next hit. So this one, um, uh, this war was very important because we were currently, I believe at this time, 2 for 3, if I'm not mistaken. So we needed to win this war um, so that we can go against Empathetic Elite, which was 3 for 3. And then after that, have a chance to get into the next portion of it, which would be, um, let me pull that up real quick, which would be the semis uh, so pretty much it's going to be the semis um, we're going to be moving in towards the uh, playoff portion playoff semifinals and then after that we'll see who we face after that so it's going to be pretty interesting guys um, i'll be showing the next video tomorrow <clears throat> this is going to be versus empathetic elite guys like i said the timing was a little off because um the what is it called the winter break <clears throat> messed things up of a bit for a few of the clans so uh, some clans were caught up but then there was others that weren't for us we were one of the clans that wasn't caught up so we needed to do a bunch of range wars guys so it was pretty hectic we had placement matches and then on top of ccl and then another ccl right after that so now we're going to have another placement match um which is going to be versus uh war whales so i'll also be showing one of those as well for this weekend because that's who we will be facing for the placement match number three but anyways guys as you can see this is a sui lalo attack this one's gonna be by chris real nice um 
job there. Got a, some decent amount of work with the King Queen. And the Queen still ended up staying alive. So great job here by Chris. Just keeping everything alive. Um, getting that nice sweet value. And then getting um, these loons to take care of the rest of the base. So that was just an awesome hit by, by Chris here. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next hit, guys. So this one's actually going to be by Jethro, and Jethro has been killing it with uh, with Sui Lalo. This is not going to be a Sui Lalo attack. I believe this was a cleanup because um, somebody got very close with the Mass Miner attack. So Jethro's just pretty much cleaning up this attack, um, this base, you know, getting the make, uh, securing the three star. Because I mean, if if an attack is super close and it was just a few minor adjustments. Get it? <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Anyways, a few minor adjustments, then, uh, you know, it's best to actually take advantage of that and make those adjustments to get the three-star, guys, because it really all depends on the 10v10s and 11v11s at the end of the day for the most part, unless you can't clear the nines, which they did struggle clearing the nines. I believe there was two nines that they couldn't clear, guys. So that's what really helped us out in this war as well. So anyways, guys, as you can see, the minor attack is started. The king was on one side, the queen on the other. The king still stayed alive for a good portion of it, guys. Getting all the way to the bottom, the queen was able to take care of the cannon and was still to, um, able to keep moving. Um, and as you can see, the miners are still being healed over there in the middle portion. There's still one heal spell left, which is going to be placed now um, because they dealt with that bomb tower. And then... Um, now this base is finally starting to look smashed at this point guys so the final structures are starting to go down there is another defense up top the cannon which are the miners are going to go deal with right now the queen is dealing with the lava helm but it's not going to pop so it's not an issue there it's a great job there by jethro <clears throat> so anyways guys i'm, I'm just going to let you know sort of the standings as far as uh what's going on for the uh, finals or the playoffs. So YOLO Viper is definitely up top. They are 7-0. King Jeffrey is 6-1. One. one Hive is 4-3. So really it depends on the next war, which would be against Empathetic Elite, which um, is I'll be posting about it tomorrow. So definitely um, keep an eye out for that one. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of uh, Range Wars, CCL, White Temple is also an MLCW. So there's definitely a lot of action going on. I usually paste um, a, a post Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 hits. I try to post a few 9s, but when, when our 10s just kill it and there's so many hits, guys, it's kind of hard to post a few ten, a few 9s just because it makes the video real long. But I'll definitely start focusing on that more once I get an opportunity to. Right now, I'm currently in school. It's been a little rough, so I can't. I, I don't have a, um, as much uh what is it? as much time as I used to so that's why it's a little bit harder guys so bear with me but I'll definitely keep posting these arranged matches and the um, war recap so that's what I'm focusing on at this time so anyways guys as you can see these hog riders are just doing some mad work beatdown is just beating every town hall 10 down he's been killing it so far he used to be our 10v11 guy he made the switch because we did have a solid 10v11 crew so there was definitely opportunities for some of those 10v11 guys to switch to 10v10s and the ccl has definitely helped us out a lot i believe because that gives us another opportunity just to have all of our 10s who are 10v11 hitters switch to 10v10 and we've definitely seen some great hits from our guys guys especially like Krosh who's a 10v11 expert he's definitely gotten um, <clears throat> some 10v10s and also myself I did a few 10v11s but with these kinds of uh, wars it gets me an opportunity to do 10v10s guys speaking of Krosh that is going to be the next hit versus Sir Dutch and in this one, sorry if I paused a bit, guys, I was trying to figure something out. But anyways, um, uh, so let's go ahead and get started with Krauj's hit. He's going to do a Bow Witch attack. He's been specializing on that, guys. He's been killing it. So pretty much getting some value with these bowlers, just getting rid of some of these structures. A wizard placed up top to get rid of that gold mine. Um, creating that real nice funnel, guys. So um, anyways, like I was saying, the CCO has definitely given us an opportunity to grow as a team and that has definitely helped us out. I know it's helped me out tremendously because um, if you see my stats, guys, I, I only got about two, I believe, two um, 11 v 11 triples throughout four games or five. I can't remember the exact number. I think it was five. And then after that, guys... Um, in this war, actually, I did get a six-pack, so I was feeling real good. My Bola Loon has been on point, guys. Really love that attack, but it's not the only attack that I know how to do. So, you know, if they build against it, I can still do Bewitch, I can do Sui Lalo, I can do different kinds of attacks. 
So it's always nice to have that variety in case they try to build against you. So anyways, guys, and you'll see what I mean in Empathetic Elite. I got a six-pack in Cold September, guys, and I got another six-pack in this Empathetic Elite War. So stay tuned for that for that um, recap, guys. We actually killed it. We got five 11v11s. I won't let you know the score so we can, you know, save that for tomorrow. But um, something to look forward to. So definitely subscribe. Uh, hit the notification button if you want to see when the actual um, video comes out. But it's definitely something to look forward to, guys, because that's pretty much the decider between who is going to go to the um, the, the playoffs uh, between Empathetic Elite and Elite Gaming because we were both 3 for 3 So anyways, guys, this is going to be by Burns. This is going to be his mini account. Um, uh, Town Hall 10, he's killed it pretty much. Um, he's been doing a great job with those hog attacks. Very patient. He likes to do the kill squad type of hog attacks. So it's real awesome seeing that different kind of variety because I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, queen walk to hogs and um, <clears throat> mass hogs. But this one is a kill squad with hogs. So that was pretty sick. And as you can see, guys, the wizard tower actually was stuck with the queen. So that definitely helped out the remaining part of the hogs. And he got a lot of value with these hog riders. So great job by Burns pretty much taking care of this base, recognizing the kill squad portion that he could get with the troops and just hogging the rest of the base. So good stuff there by Burns. So that is the army comp, guys, in case you're curious. Um, definitely helps out. I haven't messed around with that one. I am not in war with my 10 guys at this time. I haven't been in war in a long while because of the, the crazy um, timing as far as the MLCW and things like that. Um, I wasn't either for the MLCW wars, so I've been there. Um, and it was a pretty good war, guys. I'm, I actually... Uh, so we faced against um, TQ who was uh, undefeated as well. So it was the last two undefeated clans for the um, for the Archer Archer Queen League division in the MLCW. So it was a war that everybody was looking forward to because it was uh, against another undefeated uh, clan. So I'll be showing that as well, guys. I was asked to hold on that one as far as posting it. So I won't post it yet because they didn't want to use a few, re a few of their bases. So I'm not going to burn those yet. But I will be posting that recap soon, guys. So also keep in mind, um, keep that in mind. I'll most likely post it on Monday. We'll see. Um, once I get the okay, I'll definitely post it. Um, but for now, I'm going to be focusing on this one, which I'm posting today. And then I'm posting empathetically tomorrow, guys. So anyways, as you can see, the queen for beatdown getting a six-pack in this war, guys. This is going to be a bow witch attack. So he definitely knows the variety. Um, so it's always nice to, you know, have different kinds of attacks and not just focusing on one. In case they build against you, you can always use a different attack. So it's always nice to have that uh, uh, variety as far as attacks, learning all these different kinds of attacks. So beatdown, definitely killing with the 10v10s, guys. Just learning a lot of new things. He's a solid base builder, guys. Building uh, for Town Hall 10s, just killing it. That's what definitely has helped us out with the placement matches and in general. So big shout out to all the um, base builders, to be honest, because that definitely takes a lot of time. And they are just building every single day, building for a lot of people, you know, getting their bases tested, tested with different kinds of army comps, things like that. So I definitely give them props. So anyways, guys, as you can see, Burns is coming in with his real account here, the one that's um, usually with Elite Gaming. So this one right here is going to be by Burns and doing another kill squad type of hog attack. So sends in a few golems just to kind of funnel, making sure to get rid of that archer tower. And then after that, the rest of the two golems start going to the middle, guys. Is waiting very patiently for the top portion of the 12 o'clock to get rid of all of those um, random uh, buildings and stuff to make sure that his uh, kill squad goes in. So real nice poison, a rage spell to get through um, with these bowlers, guys. And then look at the value that he's getting right here. King steps in. Um, dies the queen steps in as well gets stuck with that jump spell for a bit but does use the queen ability and then after that is able to snipe down that inferno which helps out tremendously especially if there's a bunch of big bombs right there you know how people usually put their big bombs next to the infernos so that helped out with the funneling as part as part of the hog attack so it definitely helped avoid some of those big bombs and then after that, guys, they go to the last Inferno Tower, go to the last Tesla, and it's cleanup time at this point. So great job by Burns, just killing it with that hog attack, guys. So he is definitely on one when it comes to the kill squad hog attack. So very great job by Burns there. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next hit, guys. So this one, let's see. This hit, let's take a look, is going to be by... 
So this one's going to be by Sully. I believe this is Skip's account. Correct me if I'm wrong, but sorry if that is not the case. So Sully here is going to be using a, 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 lo, a, wow, a loon to take care of that Tesla guy. So very smart there because, you know, those Tesla farms can be annoying, especially if you're the first one to hit. And let's say that's the last building and it happens to get you. It can be very annoying. So take took care of that very early on. And look at the amount of uh, <clears throat> damage that that king did. Just went straight in, took care of the enemy queen. So very great value with that Sui Lalo, guys. Skip is just crazy when it comes to the Sui Lalo in general. Um, even with his 11, guys. So he just knows how to do it all. 9, 10, and 11, so killing it there, and then real nice hay spells just placed right through, getting rid of the rest, uh, getting through the rest of the bases, guys, so great job there with that attack, it was just awesome seeing um, this whole base just getting murdered by, <laughs> by Skip, just, you know, finding those weaknesses, getting, getting that value with the Sui, and then just lolloing the rest, guys. Um, and he is just a beast. Uh, at Town Hall 9, I believe he had one of the highest, or the highest, I should say, um, percentage as far as um, 9v9s go. He was in Faked Wargasm, I believe. Um, I had a bunch of accounts there, but he did transfer most of his accounts to us. So definitely appreciate that because he's been killing it, guys. So anyways, this is my six-pack coming up, guys. So ABD, big shout-out to him. He actually was the one to scout for me. So this scout, he pretty much um, used the things that I needed to make sure that the funnel was going to be created, um, making sure that the bowlers do actually go inside. So I went ahead and went in, placed a nice rage spell to get through. I wanted to make sure I could get the town hall to secure the two-star in case we I didn't get the three. And then take care of the enemy queen. <clears throat> and then starting the lava loom portion, guys. Pretty much three going in clockwise. So real nice rage spell here. Taking care of the wizard tower. Unfortunately, they missed that inferno, guys. Which was weird because I thought they would for sure take care of that inferno. Because that was one of the closer things. So it did not happen. But the good thing, guys, is that I had so many um, balloons left. That by the time they got over there and took care of the inferno... It was not a big issue, so I wasn't worried at all. Look at that. Look at how many loons I have left, guys. So taking care of the loons, I mean the <laughs> the last defense structure, and then after that it was just cleanup, guys. So I'm telling you guys, this attack is probably one of the stronger attacks. I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorites, um, especially now with the increased troop size. I pretty much added a few more loons and then a few more my, uh, minions to help with the cleanup. So I used to do this attack before at 11v11, and I was still doing pretty good. Um, three starring Town Hall 11s before the big update. So now with the update and the new heroes and everything, definitely helped out a lot. So, anyways, guys, this is another um, go bola loon. I mean, a bola loon. So I pretty much started the funnel, making sure that my troops go in, king, queen, bowlers, and then I use the king ability, use a warden to make sure that everything stays alive. Took care of the inferno, took care of the enemy queen and the CC, which is the most important thing. So that's the main thing that I want to get. And then after that, guys, as you can see, I got some good value here. So I started the Laloon portion at the bottom, going from uh, 3 o'clock, going clockwise. And then after that, guys, check this out. Uh, place a he uh, hay spell and then a nice heal just to keep these uh, loons alive against this Inferno, um, <laughs> Inferno Dragon, Inferno Tower. And then check this haste out, guys. It was Pretty well placed. I wasn't expecting those loons to go through, so that really helped out. Even though there was one air defense left, there was way too many loons that just overpowered that air defense. So I pretty much killed it there, guys. Got myself a six-pack. It's been a long while since I've gotten a six-pack myself, so I was pretty happy about the results here, especially in a war that I knew... Um, we really needed a win, so very excited there. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the last attack. This one's going to be by Skip. He's just killing it, guys. I believe this was a Sui Lalo kind of attack. So check this out, guys. So starts the king and the um, queen at the bottom portion. Sorry, it took me a while to move back down there. But anyways, um, use the, war um, the, the king, queen, and then the baby dragon just to create a funnel. The queen steps in, takes care of this inferno, guys. Check that out. And then um, there is a Lava Hound, so definitely took advantage of that. If it was a soft CC, he'd probably be, still be able to do it, but he'd have to poison the CC, um, which would give him one less spell and things like that. So anyways, guys, as you can see, the La Loom portion is started, so it was pretty much clockwise, um, starting like around 7 o'clock. And look at these spells, guys, just pretty much massacred it with the spells. Look at how many loons are left, guys. 
these loons are just killing it. It was pretty much overwhelming for this base. The air defense, even though it was one of the last few things to stand, went down so fast. It was crazy. So anyways, congrats to Zeus, um, or Skip, I should say, getting that awesome three-star. We did win this war. So um, good game goes Cold September. Um, and anyways, guys, thanks again for tuning in. This is DJ Clan Smasher. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Empathetic Elite War. Can't wait to see you there so you guys can see the final results. It was a crazy war. That's all I can tell you. So anyways, guys, um, this is pretty much how it looked as far as our Town Hall 11s killing it, helping out with everything. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.